Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be doing a bit of a review. So the folks at Rigid Inc. reached out to me as well as a number of other um, 3D print YouTubers and asked us to um, review their filament. And with this, they sent me some uh, filament, but not just any filament. Um, this is a PLA Plus. So now the idea behind this is it prints like PLA but is supposed to wear like ABS so I think as all you folks know out there from some of my previous videos I'm not a fan of the way ABS prints it's sort of a pain is a pain um, I love the way PLA prints so when they offered this I thought this be a pretty interesting opportunity uh, to test this out because if this really does work and wears like ABS then you know heck um, I think it's an interesting alternative, and so uh, I figured to give it a go. Now, I was hoping that they were going to send me a spool, but they sent me several packets. There's a few more outside of these, just kind of showing you. Uh, so I'm not going to, unfortunately, be able to print something very large, because my original plan was to print something pretty big and, and um, compare it to some of the other stuff that I've already printed out in ABS and to see, you know, what, what the strength is and maybe even do some strength tests, but this is what I've got to work with so this is what we're going to give a shot the other thing that they mentioned too is they sent a little card here or paper uh, suggesting the print temperature be around 230 to 240 so this is going to print uh, more in the temperature range of um, ABS than PLA so we'll see how that goes in addition to the candies that they sent me too thank you um, they sent me this, uh, this Ziploc bag. Actually, I got uh, two of them, uh, which is kind of interesting because it's kind of like a big freezer bag type thing that my wife has uh, for when we go grocery shopping and she buys frozen stuff and puts it in there because it's kind of, um, I, I don't know, it's not really insulated. But this has given me an idea. But anyways, the idea here is is, is you put some desk kit in here and then you put your unused filament uh, inside here like this and uh, then seal it up and then obviously it keeps moisture from wicking into your filament. So I thought that was a pretty cool idea. The only problem is it's kind of difficult to see uh, what color you have in there and if you got several bags, um, it, it would fit uh, a spool or a smaller spool anyway. So I think that's what it's intended to do. However, this did give me a little bit of a, an, an idea. So here's the 3D printing tip. So th this, this is pretty much, again, like the freezer bags my wife uses. Uh, so I see no reason why you couldn't do really the same with these freezer bags that you get. Um, you probably actually put a couple spools in there so you could save up your, your desiccant bags because one of the things I do do is, uh, you know, the nicer or larger desiccant bags I get with different stuff I do get. And you can reheat those. You, please do it safely and they release the water and you can kind of reuse them over and over again um, and then I also do store them in a, a Ziploc plastic bag and then use them as I need so this could be a, a, a this kind of gave me a neat inspiration for that and I figured I'd share it with you guys however a little bit back to the filament now is uh, I'm gonna go and uh, let's take a watch at some time lapses of, of printing some stuff and then what we'll do is we'll come back here to the bench and then we'll actually take a look at the results and you know does uh, PLA plus live up to its reputation or not so we'll take a look at a couple different things and we'll see how it works so let's cut to a time lapse All right, welcome back. So um, we printed these off. Now, if you remember from a prior video when I printed out the red versions that I did on the whole um, uh, barb thing, I couldn't get the, the, the vertical one to print. However, when I did the uh, PLA Plus, I could get, it did, did print. And uh, actually, I was a little bit impressed. And that's one of the reasons in this prior one, I didn't want to use a brim, is I kind of wanted to put it to a bit of a stress test. And, and um, this stuff printed now I did print at a, a little bit higher temperature they say around 230 I ended up having to print about 245 to get this where I kind of liked it and this is one that print vertically so I mean obviously it's a little bit more gnarly uh, whereas here is the one that printed horizontally which came out fairly nice um, 
I did these do did do these on the mono price point two uh, uh, point two layer height uh, fifty uh, point eight millimeter shells fifty percent infill is is what I did these at and uh, it, it came out okay now the um, the mono price head I don't think is the best and it's especially not the best for going above uh, two thirty in my my opinion I think you know the mono price is a good uh, as it says stock, a good PLA, standard PLA printer around 210 degrees. I think you go above there. While it's still rated for ABS, I think you, you hit some challenges. Anyways, um, <clears throat> so the other piece is, is I really want to test the resiliency. So you have regular PLA, and this is the PLA Plus, if you recall from, from the intro. And this is where I, I wanted to choose something that, that I could test the resiliency because... Uh, again, I plan on use, utilizing these as couplers for some of my machine hoses, and I, and I want some resiliency. So I figured this this is a good test. Now, one of the things, and also if you guys know of of an economical, and I mean you know like for a hundred, two hundred bucks, I can get or something that that tests strain for breakage or whatever. Please let me know below because what I'd actually like to do is get something like that in in. Um, uh, actually test various filaments and, and do videos on that so you guys can actually see uh, but most of the machines I've seen are like five six thousand dollars and that's simply not in the budget so if you have an idea or something hit me up down below and uh, I'll take a look anyways I'm gonna do this sort of sort of in a more crude fashion so just uh, having this whoa that didn't take much and I didn't think it would take much so uh, I could just simply snap that one so now let's let's take this guy and let's see. Well, he actually snapped easier. Um, so I don't know if that's a fair comparison, but I did have to put a little bit more work into this. I think um, one of the things with this is it it might be um, how do I want to say this a little bit more rigid uh, than uh, regular PLA. There seems to be maybe more end flex in this which is really interesting because one of the things that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to overlay uh, here uh, I did, did a microscopic comparison under the USB microscope of these and this is what you'll be seeing now and uh, this 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 material actually in the filament form looked like it had less scalloping um, than the uh, just plain PLA uh, which came, gave me the impression that, uh, how do I put it? It, it, it's probably maybe a little bit denser in material. Um, I should probably go back, I don't know if I'll do it in this video or not, but I would suggest looking at the sort of the specific gravity of these and see which one's denser uh, would be interesting. They didn't provide me an MSDS sheet on this. Uh, I don't know if there's one on their website. I may try to look at that. But if, 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 Rigid Inc., if you're, you're watching, please comment below. What, what is the specific gravity of this particular material? I'd like to compare it with the density. Um, although I do think that this prints a bit, how do I want to say, smoother than, than this. And again, I don't know if this is going to come out. But uh, um, if you can kind of see here the collars, uh, how how rough this is and how rather smooth this is um, so I think it you know you know th there, there's a couple different you know measurements you could kind of look at with regards to this filament you know you know uh, one is shear strength you know in other words that's that's what I tested and, and actually it broke rather easy where this one actually took more more work so so the shear uh, pressure on this I think is maybe a bit lower than these guys but then there's the compression piece and I really don't have a good way well maybe I lie so let's try maybe I lied let's 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 try something so let's put this piece in here and let's try compressing it and see see what happens Now, this isn't taking too much force. And again, this is not an overly scientific s survey. So that, that actually compresses very easily. So let's go ahead and try this one. Um, this one's taking a little bit more force. Not much more, but a bit more force. But the piece that's rather interesting and... In, 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 uh, 
I can feel it as I turn the vise. Uh, it's springier. It's definitely, you can definitely feel a, a difference in the material between the two. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to do some more experimentation with, with the two filaments and, and see uh, how it comes out. Um, I'm wondering if there's a bit of wearability difference between the two. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll give that shot in some prior, in some, sorry, not some prior, some future, some prints we do. So kind of keep an eye out. And one of the things uh, in, those, in those videos, I'll call out that it's originating PLA Plus. So you can kind of keep track along to see uh, what's going on. Now, uh, um, now, I know this is a little bit more expensive. Uh, I, I, I do right off the cuff, again, this is not scientific, so all, all you overly scientific guys out there, which I highly appreciate, don't hit me up in the comments below and tell me I'm, I'm sharing my feelings and I shouldn't do that because, guess what, it's my YouTube channel. If I want to share my feelings, I'm going to share them. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I, I think this one is a little bit more resilient than this, but not hugely. I also, but I also in the same context, having worked with ABS and other materials, find ABS not so hugely different than PLA. Yes, it is different, but I don't find it hugely different. And I don't find this hugely different from this, but it is different uh, from this. It is, it is more like... ABS to me than than the PLA so you know if I had to say ABS over here PLA plus and PLA I would definitely put this in the middle between the two uh, so if you like me then this may be worthwhile uh, the pool spool price at least on their website did seem to be a bit more expensive than the regular PLA uh, enough where mm, I might I might have a little bit of hard time justifying the difference between the two unless I had something specific. Uh, however, the one thing I would probably recommend this for is if you're if you have sort of a short run production shop, um, I could see where this would be a value to you in that in that prototyping or short run because I think the overall part will be a little bit more resilient and it will come out with a better finish because again, I do do feel, and it may not come out totally on the camera, this definitely has a better finish um, than the regular PLA. So if I was taking, if I was taking both of these to the customers, this uh, to a customer, this is the one I would take uh, because it looks nicer. And again, you know, naturally, I've squished it in a vise and I've printed it up, and I've not been friendly to it. So, so keep that in mind. But the areas in comparison, uh, again, the top of of both of these, the the green PLA plus is clearly nicer. So, uh, again, I'll try to do some more prints in the future. Uh, so anyways, this is my initial thoughts on PLA Plus from Rigid Ink and sort of my destructive testing. Again, if you have uh, ideas uh, for testing below, hey, let me know. I may do some chemical testing in the future or something like that. Uh, would be kind of interesting. I may build a UV chamber or something. But again, hit me up below if you have ideas. Uh, subscribe, give me a like, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.